Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a La Palma Volcano Update Saturday, October 9th, 10.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The volcano continues to erupt in spectacular fashion, and we'll get to that live stream. But let's get to the data. Eruption continues at La Palma in a spectacular way. The last report we had showed increased seismicity, which led to increased output, increased lava flow, increased ash flow in the last 24 to 36 hours have moved the second lava stream down towards the ocean. Now, volcanic lava in Spain's La Palma engulfs more houses and land today. Four new structures destroyed. And you can just see some of the devastating lava rivers right next to gorgeous villas and homes like the one pictured there and another lava stream is now reaching the ocean now lightning flashes over la palma also occurring because of the ionization happening by the output from the volcano the red hot eruption from the volcano on the spanish island of la palma was accompanied by flashes of lightning earlier on saturday a study published in 2016 by the Journal of Geophysical Research Letters found lightning can be produced during volcanic eruptions because of the collision of ash particles creating an electric charge. It is an electric universe after all, isn't it? Now here are the two flows as of yesterday. The second flow has gone over the cliff and is now inundating the fields of a local farmer. Ironically enough, it is now inundating the last eruptions, lava tongue into the ocean. This is from the 49 eruption, I believe, this peninsula. And now the 2021 eruption is covering the peninsula that was built on after the last eruption. Now, yesterday, La Palma Volcanic Update, the airport in Tenerife, the neighboring island to the east, was affected from ash from La Palma, which is clearly visible on the picture. So this moved direction and went over here towards Tenerife. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at this wrong. North is up and south is down. This ash turned into this easterly direction and hit Tenerife yesterday. Luckily today it has moved to the south and the people um, that are closest to the volcano in uh, Los, Lan Los Llanos down here um, are now being spared from the ash. Now, as far as today's update, it's not looking good. Look at the size of that column. La Palma volcano eruption, intense ash emissions, and continued lava effusions. Now, we showed you the new outbreak into the ocean, which has reached the ocean already, and we'll show you evidence of that. The eruption is producing more ash today, generating a dense ash column, rising several kilometers and drifting slowly towards the southeast, thus affecting, again, the airport. Our correspondent, Victor Mello, from the Volcanos de Canarias Association, who is on location, reports less vigorous explosions and lava fountaining compared to yesterday, but stronger ash. Now, this is going to be followed by uh, stronger lava outputs and fountaining tomorrow, based on what we're about to show you. I don't know what this video is. So that was the increased ash today. Look at that. I mean... This has been ongoing now. This is the 21st day of the eruption. So what we're talking about is huge amounts of volcanic emissions into the atmosphere in this region. It's affecting weather locally, and it has nothing to do with gravity waves, folks, but we'll get to that. Now, volcanic Trevor remains at similar levels during the past day. In fact, for the past several week and a half, although a weak decreasing trend continues, and we'll show you that. The unfortunate thing is that uh, seismicity is increasing as far as earthquakes. Now, the airport is open again. This is the most recent update coming just moments ago because it's actually morning there and it's night here. It's a little different. So it's already tomorrow there, which is the 10th, and it's the 9th in the evening here. And after a change in the wind, AENA -E informed that the airport of La Palma is now clean and in operation again. No confirmation that the Tenerife volcano is back open. Now, here's a short video showing the second lava flow that we showed you on the opening entering the ocean last night, which was actually today if you live in the U.S. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I know. And that is the second flow there. 
main flow that's already in the ocean. And let's go back to it. <laughs> this is the second flow approaching the ocean. So we're really in real time here. It's pretty quite spectacular how uh, up to date we can get with the data. I mean, it's basically real time. At any moment, I can get the most up to date information on. Uh, earthquakes, seismicity, and depth, which is amazing for this eruption. Now, earthquakes today, the latest earthquakes as of just moments ago, 8 p.m. tonight, in the last 24 hours, a massive uptick. In fact, the island has been sh shaken by 48 quakes of magnitude 3 or above and 107 quakes between 2 and 3, the largest grouping of quakes between 2 and above ever since the eruption be began. And this is 150 or more than 150 quakes in 24 hours above two magnitude. Not good news. They are clustering all over the island. And if we come look at quakes with depth, you could see we reported here during this uptick. We made a report the other night on this uptick. And then the lava increases here. And then look at this uptick today in seismicity. The largest uptick since the eruption began. And guess what happens tomorrow? Huge outputs of lava. There could be a new vent coming out tomorrow. Could be breaking news, and we'll bring it to you. Now, let's look at the seismicity. This is the micro seismos, not the larger quakes. And this is the beginning of the eruption. This has been the last week or so. The general, where did that go? Here it is. <laughs> the seismic tremor has been decreasing overall and has been slightly increasing recently. And we showed you this is the seismic tremor. This is not nothing to do with the last graphic we showed you. These are actual earthquakes. Tremor has to do with the output of the lava. So it's a little different. These are the quakes below 2 magnitude. These are the quakes above 2 magnitude. Below 2 magnitude, above 2 magnitude. I hope we made that quite clear. Now, the volcanic ash meeting the Saharan air layer was a unique display in the weather that Bushcraft Bear was the first person to break over a week ago, was taken up by many in the mainstream media, and even the Weather Channel called this event a gravity wave event. That's how pathetic the Weather Channel is. Now, we're at the Weather Network, which is a little better. They're from Canada, and they got it right here. And in fact, it has, if I could just close that video, my goodness, it's so annoying. Yes, we don't want that video. All right. So according to the Tulawese Volcanic Ash Center, the plume soared to three kilometers in the air on October 4th, creating a hazard to aircraft nearby. Even though the activity spiked, volcanologists still assess Cumbre de Eja is only erupting currently at VEI-2. That's the eruption we're witnessing. It's VEI-2. Now, the floating pillar of water vapor and other gases arose rapidly on this day about a week ago upward until it clashed with dry, warm layer of Sahara air, or the Sal, at roughly 5.3 kilometers altitude, according to Involcan. A handful of incredibly unique ingredients all came together to create an amazing display on the Spanish island of Palma, as an incredibly active volcano erupted. In fact, it formed ripples. Now, the abnormally warm air situated atop a temperature inversion acted like a lid stopping the plume from going any higher. And as a result, it leveled out and spread horizontally. And rollers and ripples and vortices are typical when you spread horizontally in the atmosphere due to wind shear. And that's what we got. We got a, vort a vorticity of ripples. Absolutely fantastic. Now here we are back live at the volcano. Let's check it out. Let's see how... Well, quite spectacular. Look at the pressure. It's blowing lava and rocks over a kilometer into the sky, and they're falling out here. So this is completely deadly if you're within a kilometer of this. At any point, a huge rock could hit you on the head, and you'd be dead. <coughs> but we should be seeing a major uptick in the lava output and the outgassing coming in the next 24 hours based on that seismic activity happening at depth between 10 and 15 kilometers, a massive uptick, the largest uptick in earthquakes since the beginning of the eruption. Well, it tells us one thing, that this eruption is far from over. We have a lot more reporting to do on it. And this volcano is simply evolving 
in real time as we report on it before your very lives. Hope you got something out of the video. Give them a thumbs up at FRTV. Subscribe there. Tell them Diamond sent you because they have been the one channel to keep this live stream up and going since the beginning. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where the mainstream won't pick this up, but we, over at Magnetic Reversal News, we certainly will put it down. If you don't know about our other channel, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, we will have a link below in the first, in the description box and in the comments. And you should become a subscriber there too, where we share pertinent, similar information. Did I tell you we love each and every one of you? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be a hero. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Ding, ding, ding.